Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and episode six of our custom pizza truck build. In case you can't tell, I'm feeling much better this episode. If you didn't see the last one, I got a little bit sick halfway through. A lot of people said I was not looking too good at the end and I uh, got some nice little shout outs, people wondering how I'm doing. I'm doing great, family's doing great. They never actually got sick and I don't even know if it was COVID or not because I never took the test. I just quarantined myself off of my office with a little fever, chills, body aches, all the normal symptoms like that. Watched a bunch of Netflix and a bunch of YouTube videos and at the end of this video I'll actually shout out a bunch of the YouTube channels that I found in case you guys have similar interests and want to check those out but let's take a look at how the trucks doing right now now in the last episode I got our three vent windows at the top all completed as well as our little service area in here and these steps now off camera I went ahead and installed some lift struts so you can actually see these window vents in action you just open them up like so and you could have one two or three of these open kind of depending on what the weather's like and how much air you want to flow and then there is a kind of a cool feature I want to show you on these lift struts here. These are 100 pounds each. So you've got 100 pounds there and 100 pounds there force. And the way I did it, I didn't use the factory hole right here. I used a hole on the inside that I made so that when I close it, if you see right about here is equilibrium where the piston is at its most compressed point. And then anything more closed than that, the piston is actually pulling it in because it's at this little bit of an angle and so it's forcing this arm up which actually takes some of the stress off of the piano hinge and then it helps keep this window closed in case somebody forgets to latch it. I am going to add some locks on the inside so that it can be latched but you never know with employees it's always uh, likely let's say that they're going to forget it once or twice and I just did not want the idea of this thing opening up while it's driving so that's just a little modification that you can make to these lift struts just to give it that little more extra force hold it shut. Next step is going to be building the door. I've got to make this door here and then a service window. The door is going to be two inch square tubing and then I'll do the corrugated steel on the bottom and a service window on top. So let's get to it. All right guys, I'm getting ready to hang this door and it's actually going to be a little bit tricky because I have to get the piano hinge welded against this piece of steel while it is already welded to the door. And so I wanted to show you a little trick for how I do it in case it helps you guys with some kind of project you're working on. Now on the back side here, you see I've got two paint stirring sticks, which ended up being basically the perfect thickness to separate the piano hinge to where it will be in its normal mounted position. This way I can put the door right up against the two inch piece of steel and clamp it together and those sticks will keep the inside hinge from bending. Now I also have it marked out with a bunch of little uh, circles right here. What that is telling me is those correspond to right here where they've got the factory dimples. Now those dimples actually push into the rod that goes through the center. So on one half of the hinge, the rod is actually locked to it. And then on the other half, it allows it to rotate along that rod. So basically I can weld anywhere I want to on these dimples. And even if the weld penetrates into that rod, it's not going to take away the functionality of it because it's pivoting on all the other little joints here. So that's just my little two cents on how to get something like this installed. I don't know if any of you guys are ever going to be working on something like this, but I thought it might be helpful. So let's get this door hung.
All right, I've got the three pieces all sanded down and ready to be installed, except I have a 45 degree angle piece that I put right here, and that's just because I wanna put a doorknob right here, and when I put that doorknob, it's going to be a little bit wider than the two inch wide steel that I was using, so just need a little bit of extra steel right there. Got that all set up. I'll cut a little triangle out of my little square piece, and then I'll be good to go. Guys, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. This does not look too bad, if I do say so myself. I spent extra time trying to line up, you see, just the corrugation from the top to the bottom to really make it look factory. And once I have this thing fully welded up and painted, I really do think this will look like it came out of a factory and not just some random dude in Spokane shop. Now the next step here, I've already marked out the pilot hole and started to drill out the two inch hole for the door handle. And then I will be doing some flat strap around the edge just as another weather stripping similar to how I did the top. Now I'm thinking about doing a two inch cross tube right here so that when the service windows are made, they end up being the same height. I kind of don't like that it's a little asymmetrical at the moment, but I haven't fully decided on that. After I make those service windows, it's uh, going to be shelf time. So I'll build a shelf right here. Now on the last truck that I did, I really didn't like how high the shelf was and it has been a little bit annoying while that truck is in service just because uh, some people when they're trying to like swipe their credit cards or get their pizzas, it's a little bit tall. So I came up with a solution over here. I've got this shelf made up and it drops it about six inches. Now I couldn't do this on this door because as the door swings open, the shelf comes out and then down and it would get in the way of trying to get in and out. But since we're doing a second service window, I can do it up to 20 inches, which is where it will clear right here. And then it just kind of lives like that on the inside. Now I went ahead and sent a video of showing this in action to the people that are actually gonna be operating this truck and they decided that they'd like it about 14 inches. So this is 20, I'll end up cutting it about right here and this will be a perfect spot for the little point of sale credit card machine. So next step, let's just continue on this door. We'll get the door handle installed and then we'll get the flat strap on it. So let's get to it. Now I figured while I was working in this area, I might as well address the rear fender and make some room for those tires. If you remember, the shipping container was touching just the very top of the tires and I needed about three and a half inches so that I would have room for travel. So I went ahead and cut out these supports and then welded up some new fenders. Now I don't need to worry about uh, taking any strength away because I do have more than enough reinforcement around it. And then if you remember, the entire shipping container is actually mounted to the frame of the truck with 12 of those very large U-bolts.
So I did go ahead and decide on mounting square tubing along with some flat strap at the top here. I just didn't like how asymmetrical the two openings were. So really this is just ornamental, but it'll make both service windows the same size. And I think it turned out pretty nice. All right guys, before I install these service windows, I wanted to show you one little modification that I made to these. Now I went with relatively thin sheet metal for this because I want it to be as light as possible so that the lift struts have no issues holding it up in the future. But when you go with really thin steel and you do a bunch of little spot welds like this, it ends up making it just a little bit wobbly from all of the uneven heating. And I think you can see here, there's just a little bit of that wobble to it. Now when this is closed on the vehicle, I wanted to have a nice flat surface for the weather stripping to mate to. And the way I gave it a nice flat edge here is by giving it just like a little bit of a curve. And I did that with the slip shear roll. So I'll get this one set up and uh, show you guys exactly how I did it.
All right, this is how the tables are looking up close. You see this side flips up like so and then lives inside the door. And then this one flips all the way around and lives inside our little service area right here. Of course, once these are closed, we can close the service windows nice and flush. I am, of course, going to be putting a top on here. The reason that there isn't one now is because all of this steel is going to get painted and I did not want a painted surface here just because it is going to receive a whole bunch of wear and tear like any commercial vehicle would. So once this is all painted, I'm going to clad this with aluminum. We'll put a nice sheet on the top. We'll use the slip shear roll to bend it 90 degrees and then do some rivets on the side. But these tabletops constitute the last of the major fabrication it is starting to look like a pizza truck and we are probably 90 to 95 percent done with all the fab now I do have a whole bunch of welding to do you see I've never finished welding like right here or any of this corrugated steel that's still all tacked and then I haven't quite figured out the measurements that I'm going to need for my lift struts or exactly which size up top we're using the hundred pound struts I'm probably going to end up using a pair of 68 pound struts but that's going to take a little bit of time just to get all the measurements right so I'll be doing that in a future episode. That will be it for this episode, but I did promise to tell you guys about some YouTube channels that I have been watching in the last couple of weeks. So I'm gonna hop into the computer room and we'll go over that now. All right, guys, I'm over here at the computer and the first channel that I wanted to talk to you about is called History X. Now, I found this guy because I was searching for information on the USS Johnston, which as far as I know is the deepest located shipwreck. And for some reason, I am just totally astounded by really deep shipwrecks. The idea of sinking in like 50 feet of water is not that terrifying, but the idea of sinking in 20,000 feet is absolutely terrifying. And the results are the same, so it makes no sense, but for one reason or another, super deep shipwrecks fascinate me, and that's the deepest located one. And he did a really cool video on it, so then I started looking at some of his other videos, and it's mostly focused on World War II history, but he's got all kinds of great stuff. So I actually reached out to him, his name's Ken, he's a super cool guy, and we got to chatting about my grandfather, who's actually this lovely fellow right here, and this, this is his old license plate. Uh, but uh, he's a World War II veteran, and he's actually the last surviving member of the ship that he was on the LST 1063 uh, and so Ken thought that was pretty interesting and he wanted to do a video interview with him so I'm not sure if that will ever make it up on his channel but if it does uh, I will put a link to that in the future but I asked him uh, what video would be a good one to send like a first-time viewer and uh, he recommended this one here it's titled aviation world reacts to a kc 135 refueling photo and i actually knew the background of this photo because uh, i'm a, a rotorcraft pilot and ken is a fixed wing pilot and so we're both you know interested in aviation stories and this one was from around 10 years ago where it was actually a wife refueling her husband in mid-air over afghanistan so it's an interesting story about uh, a pretty cool little photo there but head over to his channel uh subscribe if you if you can you know write any comments on his videos that certainly helps the uh, analytics and it'll help get his channel bumped up a little bit but if you're into World War II or anything like that check it out the next channel that I wanted to recommend is a guy named uh, Lawrence Tolman, LT Tolman. I actually met him in Tennessee, and he's a super cool guy and one heck of a mechanic. And if you are at all interested in the 454 that I'm building up for this truck, well, really just rebuilding in stock form, but you're more interested in like the power adding side, he has an 8.1 LS big block that he put a turbocharger on, and then he also is building a 4.8 kind of a comparison truck. So head over to his channel um it's it's pretty awesome i specifically like the uh, 4.8 versus the 8.1 kind of shootout that he's got going on but it's a really good channel especially if you're into automotive stuff which i imagine most of the people that are following my channel are uh, i do have a couple uh, channels that i've been following recently that are barn dominium builds but i'll do a shout out for those on my next uh, barn dominium video because it seems to make a little bit more sense to throw it on there uh, so that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for making it this far. I especially appreciate the people that make it all the way to the end. Uh, if I do have any kind of off-topic information, that's, that's where I like to put it in the video. So it's cool that you made it this far. Hopefully you're enjoying this build, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.